Well, Homeworld 3 comes out from Gearbox, and it's not what people expected. A game that took 20 years in the making has been twisted into a narrative design nightmare. This is from Fandom Pulse by the writer Jack Dunn. Gearbox deletes Lynn Joyce interview, the narrative writer who ruined Homeworld 3. This game is completely mixed reviews on Steam right now. A lot, a lot of the reviews are saying, I waited 20 years to get this crap. Uh, a lot of people are refunding the game and it's absolutely horrific where this game has gone. What you fell in love with, the type of games that you fell in love with are no longer. You get stuff like this where a game will come out, it'll be in a buggy state, and then the storytelling is just absolutely horrific and nobody wants to play it anymore. And now they're taking an interview with one of the lead writers on it and trying to bury it because of the diversity quota that has been discovered within it. Desperate to hide the heavy-handed DEI treatment Gearbox gave to its latest video game in the Homeworld franchise, Gearbox not only pulled the interview with rabid leftists and managed director of narrative properties at Gearbox, Lynn Joyce, from Homeworld's webpage, but now moderators on the game's official boards are also banning anyone that criticizes the story or merely asks whether Sweet Baby Inc. or any other DEI narrative writers were involved in Homeworld 3. The difference with this one is it's a Vancouver-based video game that was put out there, not Quebec-based, but the tie-in, it's in Canada. I, I don't know what's wrong with my country right now. I am sorry for what is going on with my country right now. If you're working on video games from Vancouver or Quebec, it seems that these games are getting twisted up and absolutely DEI treatment. It's, it's not anywhere that anyone wants in these games. Gamers had said Kabutis, Kabutis Rambo, the creator of the Sweet Baby and Curator page for Steam, um, and the reason for the ban being cited, inciting harassment of Pacific persons, additional off-topics and inflammatory conversations that contain racist or discriminatory content. You've been banned from Homeworld 3 Community Hub by a Homeworld 3 developer for your posts on Homeworld 3 general discussions. Thanks for letting me know I should remove from my wish list. I don't really feel like playing to watch someone desecrate yet another beloved franchise. Ban reason, inciting harassment of a Pacific person, additionally off-topic inflammatory conversation that contains racist or discriminatory content. So you say the game, the franchise has been desecrated. Uh, it's nowhere what people expected the game to be. It doesn't resonate with the original games. It's not even recognizable and is only recognizable by, by name alone. And someone says, this game has been ruined. I want my money back. And they just ban them outright from the, uh, from the community hub uh, for discussing it. So yeah, this, <laughs> this is a permanent ban at the bottom there absolutely ridiculous and if you take a look at what is going on here you know I've, I've i've gotten a couple here um this one was a good the bad and the ugly type of review that came out of it the good literally was nothing out of the ordinary they didn't really prop up anything but the bad was story not a huge fan of the antagonist it's hard to get hooked on them without spoiling too much there are some holes in the writing where i can see some and the fan frustration originating from however on the same token those holes are necessarily big gameplay the pacing of the game is a multiplayer is too fast i can do skirmish matches against the ai in 10 minutes it's hard to enjoy a game uh if i'm essentially sweating because the resources deplete extremely quickly the campaign also has some glitchy moments which cause some frustration writing character writing is a little dry Igmon and Isaac are a step in the right direction, don't get me wrong, but there's something off about them. The main antagonist is the worst offender, however. Gameplay, the lack of unit options for both factions is a missed opportunity. Cataclysm, argue me, had more options to work with than Homeworld 3. Even Deserts of Karak had more. The ugly side of things. 
some glitches and other odd things. For example, when playing in Incarnate in multiplayer, why does the resource controller come out as uh, out of hyperspace? Feels kind of odd, if not lazy. Also, I'm not giving in the Incarnate Mothership its unique name is odd. Other, some odd out of place elements in MP, why does it say Mothership has a Masonic beam? That's simply not true. The Incarnate Mothership doesn't have any listed information, uh, graphics and designs. It comes off silly to me that the turrets of, for both factions, Motherships are on rails. This is more of a personal opinion. If, uh, if the review regarding the EULA and privacy statement is true, then this should be a massive deal breaker for potential buyers. There's some basic information that should be okay to share, but the info like credit card information or other highly sensitive information that BBI and Gearbox are selling should be a huge red flag. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot of stuff going on with their EULA as well. With the EULA goes way too far and has no personal, no right to invade personal privacy some nuggets uh they give themselves license to collect data like first name last name email residential address phone numbers photographic images if uploaded by the user credit card information if provided their third party payment process for per purchasing shipping information if per um, provided for purchases country game device identifier screen name demographic information age gender date of birth marital status race level of education if you choose to provide in the details surveys or forums such as application to be become one of their play testers so their the information that they're asking for is pretty evasive i i haven't seen many eulas go that far in a while um but we've seen them in the past other things there's probably more bad but let's skip to the god awful the story is god awful who wrote this did anyone read the script before making a campaign who approved the script thinking uh it's any good because it's not it's bad homeworld 2 story is compared to this worthy of all the accolades Sharknado is an Oscar worthy compared to this. While I do not mind that the story is more focused on individual characters, they are badly written. The motivations for the main villain are less complex than a Sunday morning episode of Paw Patrol. Why does this seem like Intel has authority over Fleet Command in the story? The story of Homeworld is a story about the people finding their origins and going beyond, but told through the voices of the game. Fleet Command, Intel, and Benturis, the Tar Taladan, even the villains. There is no grand story here. It's just, I don't know what to call it. Well, if it wasn't bad enough for Lynn Joyce uh, being in charge of Gearbox Homeworld 3, narrative writing wasn't enough. It appears from the Homeworld 3 credits, apart from Lynn, at least two DEI groups were involved in Gearbox's Homeworld 3. One is the Academic Center for Digital Media who advocates for justice, equity, and diversity and inclusion in games. The other is Canadian-based community group called diversity in games who according to their webpage care about curating a safe space for marginalized members of the gaming industry with a focus on inclusivity we know are there are many incredible people from all backgrounds and experiences making an impact in vancouver based community and we're inspired to help make sure that trend continues that's a lot to be said for DEI. Once again, they're ruining games. This is nothing new. We're seeing this over and over. I'm starting to feel like a broken record. It's just another form of affirmative action that was destroyed back in the 80s, 90s. They got rid of it. They had laws against it. I think that we're going to have to probably start writing our MPs or our people in politics to start getting these laws changed to stop this trend down a slide that is just going to completely ruin the the namesake of a lot of games there's a 300 billion dollar market in video games and this is the push that it's going right now and it's not a fun place to be anyway i'm your product Canadian phoenix center shadow i'm signing off here have yourselves a great day and don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs>